Liberty Process. This is an instructional assembly video for the Millennium Series 1EO12 G1L Progressing Cavity Pump. While repairing, disassembling, or installing any Liberty Process product, we recommend using the Operations, Maintenance, and Installations manuals and reviewing them before starting any repairs. These are available for view or downloadable at www.libertyprocess.com. These manuals contain the full information on how to properly and safely assemble, disassemble, and safely operate your Millennium Series Liberty brand progressive cavity pump. Tools required for the assembly of the Millennium Series 1 EO12 G1L progressing cavity pump. A 5 32ths, 3 16ths, and 5 16ths Allen wrench. A 7 16ths, half inch, 9 16ths, 3 quarter, 7 eighths, and 15 16ths inch wrench. A 5 32nds inch ball driver for the clamp ring on the shell. A rubber mallet, hammer, and dowel rod. A tape measure and level. Pipe thread sealant bearing grease, a grease gun and a brush, a vise mounted to a table or stand, and an arbor press or hydraulic press. Bearing installation onto pump drive shaft. Stand the drive shaft vertically on a workbench with the drive shaft head on the bottom. Place the thrust bearing onto the drive shaft, taper side up. Put the shaft and bearing into a press and seat the thrust bearing. Take care to put pressure on the inner race of the bearing to prevent damage. Install the thrust bearing all the way until it stops against the shoulder. Take the shaft out of the press and place the outer race, flat side up, around the thrust bearing. Place both halves of the spacer directly on top of the outer race of the thrust bearing. Place the outer race of the radial bearing, flat side down, directly on top of the spacer. Now place the radial bearing, taper side down, into the outer race. Although not shown here, you may want to put a piece of tape or rubber band around the spacer to keep it from coming apart while in the press. Place the shaft into a press in order to seat the radial bearing, again being sure to put pressure on the inner race. Remove the drive shaft from the press and place it back on the workbench. Install the bearing lock nut onto the drive shaft. If preferable, add lubricant to the threads. Tighten down the bearing lock nut until you can feel a medium resistance when turning the bearings. Warning: Over tightening the nut will cause the bearings to lock, resulting in pump failure. Radial Grease Seal Installation Place the pump bearing housing on a workbench with the side that the bearing cover will be installed on the bottom. This will expose where the radial grease seal will be installed in the top of the bearing housing. Place the radial grease lip seal, spring side down, into the pump bearing housing. Gently tap into place with a dowel rod and hammer, being careful not to damage the seal. Shaft installation into pump bearing housing. Flip the bearing housing on the workbench so the drive end is face up. Hold the pump drive shaft by the shaft head and insert it into the drive end. Be careful not to damage the radial shaft seal. Assistance may be needed to place the drive shaft bearings and housing into a press. Press the shaft and bearings into the housing until they are seated. Take the bearing housing out of the press and bolt it or clamp it to a workbench to hold it in place. You can now install the brass set screw into the drive shaft lock nut. Tighten down the brass lock screw with a 5 seconds inch Allen wrench to prevent the lock nut from coming loose while the pump is in service. 
be advised that the brass lock screw should be new and can only be used once. Add the flinger ring to the drive shaft and push it all the way against the nut. Place both pieces of the split packing gland into the bearing housing around the drive shaft in the correct orientation for later installation. Add a 1 8 inch NPT Zerk plug to whichever side you prefer using a 7 16 inch wrench. Add a regular 1 8 inch plug to the other side with a half inch wrench. Be sure to lubricate all bearings properly with bearing grease. Failure to do so will result in bearing and pump failure. Thrust grease seal and bearing cover installation. Set the bearing cover on your workbench and install the thrust grease seal, spring side down, by tapping it gently with a dowel rod and hammer. Take care not to damage the thrust seal. Install the O-ring on the opposite side. Install the bearing cover onto the end of the bearing housing over the drive shaft head. Be careful not to damage the thrust grease seal in the bearing cover. Tighten down the six retaining bolts and lock washers with a 9 16 inch wrench. Packing and split lantern ring installation. Put the suction casing on the workbench with the side that the packing will be installed on the top. Add the packing to the stuffing box, making sure to alternate the cuts in the packing. Stack the packing until you reach the grease port, then add one more piece. Add both pieces of the split lantern ring to the stuffing box. Then add as many more pieces of the packing that will fit. The packing gland will eventually compact the packing until the split lantern ring is in line with the grease port. Add a standard 1 8 inch plug to the suction casing. Then add a 1 8 inch NPT Zerk plug. If you are not using a split lantern ring, you will add two standard 1 8 inch plugs. Although not shown here, be sure to lubricate the suction casing properly. Pump Suction Casing Installation Slide the suction housing clamp ring onto the drive end side of the suction case. Install the retaining ring into the groove on the suction casing. With the help of another person if needed, add the suction casing, clamp ring side first, onto the bearing housing. The flange could be up or at whichever angle is preferred for your application. Install the four mounting bolts with lock washers, then tighten the bolts equally in a cross pattern with a 15 16 inch wrench. Mounting the pump rotor onto the connecting rod. Put the connecting rod in a vise. Although not shown here, add grease to an end of the connecting rod. Add the gear ball seal and fill with grease.
Add the gear ball spacer with the beveled edge out and add grease. Add the thrust plate beveled side in and add more grease. Add the gear ball in the correct orientation, matching the area on the gear ball that has no splines with an area on the connecting rod that has no splines. Add the nylon nut and tighten with a 7 8 inch socket wrench. Although not shown here, make sure to completely coat the gearing with grease. Failure to do so may result in pump failure. Place the rotor on the workbench vertically with the head side up. Set the O-ring at the bottom of the rotor. Add the primary thrust plate, flat side down, and fill with grease. Add the two keys. Now add the gear rack and fill with grease. Take the connecting rod and install the gear ball end onto the rotor. Wipe away the grease that should be displaced. Add the shell to the rotor and connecting rod assembly, making sure to line up the holes vertically. Install the set screw part way with a 5 32nd inch Allen wrench so it's ready for installation but still allows the shell to fall. Add the O-ring to the groove in the shell and rotor head. Now add the two-piece clamp ring to the shell. Use the 5-32nd inch ball driver to tighten the six screws in the shell which will pull the shell tight to the two-piece clamp ring. Once the six shell screws are tight, finish installing the lock set screw with a 5 32nd inch Allen wrench. Finish lubricating the joint through the fill hole in the gear joint shell by temporarily installing a 1 8 inch NPT Zerk grease fitting with a 7 16 inch wrench. After filling the shell with grease, remove the temporary grease fitting. Add thread sealer to a 1 8 inch NPT flush plug and install into the shell with a 3 16 inch Allen wrench. Pump stator installation. Lubricate the inside of the stator with liquid soap. Insert the rotor and con rod into the stator. Add a clamp ring to one side of the stator using a rubber mallet to assist you if necessary. Then add the retaining ring, making sure it's all the way in the channel. Now add the clamp ring and retaining ring to the other side of the stator. Place the stator support on the workbench in front of the suction casing with the flat part of the support foot facing away from the suction casing. Balance the stator on the support. Put the stator gasket into the suction casing. Insert the stator assembly, conrod first, into the bearing housing.
Attach the stator to the suction case by adding the four retaining bolts with lock washers and tighten with a 15 16 inch wrench. Add the gasket to the discharge connection. Then add the discharge connection to the rear of the stator. Install the four retaining bolts with lock washers and tighten with a 15 16 inch wrench. Drive shaft assembly. Add the seal to the connecting rod on the bearing plate end. Beveled side in and seat all the way. Although not shown here, be sure to fill the seal with grease. Add the spacer, bevel side out, and add more grease. Add the secondary thrust plate to the drive shaft, beveled edge in, and add more grease. Add the gear ball in the correct orientation, matching the area on the gear ball that has no splines with the area on the connecting rod that has no splines. Now install and tighten the nylon lock nut using a 7 8 inch wrench and cover with grease. Add the gear rack onto the gear ball inside the drive shaft with the key waist facing the opening. Make sure to align the key slot and the gear rack with the lubrication port on the drive shaft. Now put the two keys in place. Put the shaft head seal ring into the slot on the shaft head. Add the primary thrust plate into the drive shaft head, beveled side out, making sure to align the pin in the head with the pin slot on the thrust plate. Insert the shaft head into the drive shaft being careful to line up the keys with the key ways. Install the six shaft head socket screws into the shaft head in a star pattern and tighten down with a 5 16 inch Allen wrench. Now add a 1 inch seal plug to the shaft with a 3 16 inch Allen wrench. Install the 1A inch Zerk grease fitting into the gear joint lubrication port on the shaft head and tighten down with a 7 16 inch wrench. Now install the shaft key into the shaft keyway using a rubber mallet. Split packing gland installation. Install the two packing gland studs by screwing them into the threaded holes on the sides of the suction casing, then install the split packing gland pieces onto the two studs. Once the split gland is on the packing gland studs, tighten the packing gland nuts onto the two packing gland studs using a 9 16 inch wrench. Stator support installation and pump alignment. 
Using a tape measure, make sure the length from the center of the pump casing flange to the end of the pump adapter is the recommended distance for your specific stage 1EO12 G1L pump. If you have any questions regarding the recommended lengths on your Millennium pump, please feel free to contact a Liberty Process representative by going to our website at www.libertyprocess.com. Add the top of the stator support and tighten the two mounting bolts by hand. Using a tape measure, now make sure that the length from the end of the adapter to the anchor hole in your stator support is the recommended distance for your specific 1EO12 G1L pump. Place a level on top of the flange to make sure that it is level. If adjustment is needed to the flange angle, loosen and retighten the bolts on the bearing housing clamp with a 15 16 inch wrench. Now finish tightening the two mounting bolts on the support using a 15 16 inch wrench. Add the pump drain plug into the bottom of the pump casing using a 3 quarter inch wrench. Use thread sealer to seal the threads to prevent leakage during use. Your pump is now completely assembled and should be leak tested using water to check the seal for leakage. If no leaks are present, the pump can now be reinstalled into the pump system. Feel free to celebrate accordingly. If you have any questions about or require spare parts for the repair of your Liberty Process 1 EO12 G1L Progressive Cavity Pump, please feel free to contact us at www.libertyprocess.com. We always have complete pumps and all spare parts in our inventory ready to ship the same day.